Hey guys, this is Gamakal, and welcome to the first part of Strawberry Bros, also known as their game, The Genius of Sapphiros. Yes, this is the weekend edition. This is pretty much, pretty much my favorite Toho fan game. Uh, there's a few others which I play more often, but this is definitely my favorite to just go back and, you know, do for. A while. It's the one I've spent the most time in, that's for sure. <laughs> Partly because it's an RPG and that's how, you know, it goes. There's a decent bit of grinding for stuff if you want to get most of the really good things. But it's just a generally fun game, the way that the mechanics are designed. The actual game itself is pretty hard unless you know what you're doing, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So I figured I would just show what the intro and everything is all like. We are going to be using this file. And uh, yeah, this is basically what we had before, except without the getting of stuff from Akyu in top 0.5. So essentially, this is your main hub world, the Hakure Shrine, and uh, as it says, I've already said put these in the previous one, but yeah, there's no save function, but when the menu is closed or when you use a save ring, then you get all your stuff back. If you use a save ring, you get all, all the, the spell circles, you get all your HP, MP, bombs. Well, you don't actually get your HP back, because technically you get that all the time anyway. Uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. I do actually need to go quickly see Akio again. So, yeah, spoilers, there's a cutscene and stuff. Basically, Akio is not really too much use for us at the moment, but she does, uh, she does give us recipes, which later on we shall be able to craft weapons from. So, I really should have done this first, but I forgot that you know, when resetting the file for showing the bonus characters and stuff. I didn't I did not actually already do that, so heck yeah. Anyway, our first destination is the Scarlet Devil Mansion. Like I said before, this game is broken up into stages, just like regular Toho. Except obviously it's RP it's an RPG, but each location is its own stage, so yeah. And, well, we're going into the Scarlet Devil Mansion, so of course we have to meet Mei Ling first. <laughs> Indeed. Except you're not really very good at that, are you? <laughs> yeah. No, Mei Ling. No. Must. Stay. Awake. Nope. <laughs> yep, so basically mailing is useless as always. So I don't think Sanai has actually been to the Scarlet Devil Mansion yet either, because I think this takes place before uh, Toho 12.3, so although there were no new characters and stuff really introduced now, there was the catfish, but the catfish I don't think like, shows up in this game. Not as an actual character, anyway. So, uh, yeah, I don't think Sanai's actually been into the mansion ever. So, yeah. Ha. Huh. And of course, that's gonna wake her up because, you know, thundering the gates open is enough to wait open, you know, wake up the. the <laughs> Saku using her powers again. No, you were asleep. <laughs> That's not how it works. Worth a try. So yeah, this game's very first combat thing is actually going to be a boss fight. Because that's how Toho is, I guess. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So, that, well, yeah, of course. What's her name? Nobody knows. <laughs> Everybody says it. Nobody even cares. Too bad. Mailing's the butt of every joke again. Huh. 
Huh? So yeah, a technically boss fight against Mailing. So I guess we can see some of the some of the stuff now. So yeah, you can view enemies. This is home Mailing, obviously. Uh, you can clear the screen if you want to just get a screenshot, I guess, because screenshots are possible from this game. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you can try and run if you want, but there's not really much point in doing that for just now. Uh, quick battle is auto, where everybody just vanilla physicals the enemy, so... And you can cancel that at any time, so long as you not disabled that. Uh, support is something we can't use yet, so we just go to begin fight, and... You'll see that everybody's got their own vanilla physical here, and then they have Dan Marku skills, so... The rock here is the symbol of physical attack. If it was a staff that we'll see in a sec, that's for magic. And uh, if you press the Y button, then you will defend. So defending doesn't actually defend the character in this game, it just means they don't take an action for their turn. You can cancel anything with B at any point so that you can get back to stuff. And then by pressing X, you can see what everything does. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the range part of the weapon is for because it never like determines anything in terms of what you can hit. There aren't enemies which are resistant to stuff depending on how far away they are, but I imagine maybe that you would do more damage at the right, uh, correct range. Like if you had a close range weapon, then it would be, you know, uh, best at enemies that are directly in front of you, something like that. Um, so yeah, each skill has an MP cost, a uh, target, which we'll get into later because we only have one target right now, and a cooldown for their, you know, how many turns you're not allowed to use them. We actually don't have enough MP to use this skill yet, so yeah, uh, that's kind of funny that they give you some skills right at the start that you can't use. But the other thing is that if the card, uh, if there's a spell card involved, then it has a star next to it and a red background. So that will take a bomb as well as the MP to cast. So the bombs you can see are the green stars on the character's uh, info down below. The red stars are their lives. We'll get into that when somebody dies later. So yeah, and then if it's got two stars, this actually has a green background. You just can't see it because it's grayed out. But green cards are last spells, and they take two bombs, as it says there. Obviously, they have very strong effects though to to compensate for that. So yeah. So we'll just show a couple of the basic things. Yeah, Aya basically uh, uses an axe like weapon. We'll use a spell with her. Why not? Now Remu is actually very good for this fight because. Uh, Light is the weakness for mailing, so we shall just go ahead and use a needle. And then Marissa, you see she's got the usual sort of magic based stuff. Uh, she doesn't allow you to use shields though with her weapon. We'll see how that affects things later. But So then it's based on speed of course as to who goes first and other you know general stuff and uh, mailing kinda dies. Now, if you don't use your spells and stuff, melee can actually kill you fairly easily, so don't neglect your stuff. Uh, also, you may have seen I mentioned that mailing was weak to light. If you notice briefly when Remu's light attack, her needles hit her, then the damage modifier, uh, not the modifier, the damage that you dealt, the number was flashing. So that's a that's a an introduction to weekend I believe where um, if you hit for weakness you will see it. Unfortunately, there's nothing if you hit for resistance. That would have been really nice as well. But oh well. Well, we got experience and power there. There are two separate <laughs> sacrifice was necessary. <laughs> There are two different experience types you get in this game. So the points are literal experience, and the power is for uh, growth trees. So I guess a more modern RPG element that way. But we'll see what each of those do relatively soon. And uh, yeah, the door is kind of locked, so we aren't getting in that way. <laughs> yeah, that's that's obviously the line of work, uh, the line of thinking that Remu always has. Yep. Instead, there's a door. <laughs> nope. Nobody else is going to hear anything. 
but then if we can't get inside, we can't resolve the incident, right? Uh, but Marissa, da 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 da, kind of has something, uh, something to say about all this. Secret exit. So we're gonna have to go through the library to reach Romelia, but we can get in. So. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to know that. Serial thief! Oh man, that story now. <laughs> so yeah, uh, apparently the Scarlet Devil Mansion is a busted up doghouse. I have no idea why they would have that, but yeah, they do. So. <laughs> No one can get out, yeah, but that's kind of besides the point. No, not exactly. But anyway, I guess that is besides the point. <laughs> well, maybe they just don't care for the doghouse, never thought of that. <laughs> So let's just shoot the doghouse then. Apparently that one amulet is more than strong enough to get rid of it. It's kind of interesting. So welcome to stage one, the Great Library. And again, Sana hasn't actually been in this place yet in terms of uh, the Toho timeline, so yeah. Of course, but not much you can do about that, Remy. I was just like, I don't really care for being in here, and I I can't read, so. <laughs> what did you say? Uh huh. Lots and lots of treasures, but not really for reporters. <laughs> It's just Sire, uh, Sa uh, Sire, Sane at the bottom is just all super happy looking around all the books and everything, just that's kind of what she's like, because she's so excited, obviously. <laughs> just borrowing, uh-huh. So before we go any further into stuff, I guess I'm quickly gonna go heal back up because you don't get your HP and MP no you get your HP back after battles but you don't get MP so even though we didn't take physical damage there I'm gonna just very quickly heal up and just to show you can leave the stages at any time and go back to heal there is no worry about doing that so that's how that works and I guess because I didn't show I don't think I showed the sign here last time. Basically, if you don't know where you're going for whatever reason, I don't know how you wouldn't know where you're going in this game because it highlights the stage you need to go to, then you can get a hint about which direction you should be going on the overworld map. Really isn't necessary though, let's be honest. But anyway, let's just go ahead and go back into the mansion because, well, that is where the first stage is going to be. So, you can see here, MP, bombs and lives, you can recover them at the circles, which is what we just did, so that's a thing, but you don't recover them outside of that. You do start every fight at full HP though, so you don't have to worry quite so much about that. And here, well, you have a treasure chest which has a sword. So I guess this is as good a time as any to explain a little bit about the menu before we go too much further. So obviously you can see your character stats and all the you know experience they need at level 1, they need 40 experience before they level up, blah blah blah. Uh, you can see more detailed stats about them, so you see what how many lives and bombs they start with, you see what equipment they've got, we'll go more into the equipment later. But uh, for now, we will just explore the other stuff. So 
The power is a separate level system, like I said. So you have a hundred points for a level up. They do not carry over between level ups. So if you got 50 power and you know only needed 10, then that's 40 wasted. So doesn't usually come into play too much, but it's just something to bear in mind for boss fights and stuff. Uh, you see each character's got strength, dexterity, etc. The usual sort of stuff, so physical damage, uh, dexterity is uh, accuracy and evasion, I believe. Uh, intelligence for magic, obviously. Uh, vitality for defense, agility for speed, and potential is for resistance, which is uh, resistance to status conditions and debuffs and stuff like that. Uh, beyond that, obviously, physical attack and defense is determined other stuff. Magic defense is usually reserved for magicians and particular armor stuffs. Uh, you can buff it, but it's not quite so easy. Uh, induction is the only other stat that's different here. That is your ability to inflict status. So induction and resistance are kind of opposites in their stat stuff here. The higher your induction, the more likely you are to inflict status conditions. And then on the far right hand side, the colored symbols we have here are physical, uh, not even physical, they're resistances to elements. So Reimu's kind of boring, she's not resistant or weak to anything, but going in order from the top left down, we've got fire, water, earth, lightning, light, and then on the right hand side it's Darkness, Mystic, which is kind of non-elemental, and then the three physical elements of Slash, Stab, and Strike. So every weapon is categorized as one of those three types, and obviously certain enemies are going to be weaker or stronger to those types. So we can have to take a look. Obviously Marissa is kind of boring as well. She's not really weak or resistant to anything either. Neither is Sunai, but Aya is. So for whatever reason, Aya is weak to earth and resistant to electric. It's kind of a reverse Pokemon logic here. The bird, uh, the bird character is weak to ground, I guess. I guess earth can also be rock, so there is that. But why should she be resistant to lightning? I don't know. So. To briefly explain how we know this, the triangle symbols indicate weakness. So this hollow triangle equals 25% weakness. You will take 25% more damage from earth attacks than a regular character like Sanai would. If that's a filled in triangle, or the filled in circle for resistance, that's a 50% weakness. So you would take, you know, 50% more damage. Or in this case for Aya's lightning, the circle is filled, so her lightning resistance is 50%. She takes half damage from lightning attacks. If you have an X, then you have a 100% weakness, so you take double damage. And if you have a crossbone, which isn't something you will normally find, but does actually appear post game, then you have, I believe it is a 300% weakness. I'm pretty sure you take four times the damage from that. It kind of just scales up. Likewise, if you have a double circle, then uh, you will have a 75% resistance. And if you have a, you know, ho a hollow star, then you have a 87.5% uh, resistance. So you take one eighth of the damage from that. We won't see that very often, but it can come up later. Uh, for enemies, a filled in star will be a 100% resistance to that. Uh, we'll see in the records, we can see how, you know, our general history of stuff and uh, the yokai that we have exterminated. Um, you see, mailing's only weak to light and nothing else, so yeah. But you see the general stats on the enemy, and uh, if you have scanned the enemy with Aya, then you, or it's a boss character, then you can see information about them. We're not going to do that very much though, because it takes a long time and you need to be a higher level than the enemy and it's just kind of dumb. Don't really care too much about that. So yeah, that's essentially what that is. You can see all the equipment that you've gathered here, Moss Philosopher in this bit, and then all the types of formations that you have, which we shall go into later, because that's not too important just now. Um, in terms of equipment, you can see what everybody has. So every character has their own unique type of weapon. 
So, and that's what we all start with here. So, Reimu has a Gohei, Marissa has a Broom, Sana's got her Snake Whip thing, and uh, Aya has a Fan. As, well, I guess you may expect. Uh, each character also has their own specific armor, but unlike the weapons, they are a generic class. So, every character has their own weight class. Uh, everybody here except Marissa is a middleweight for now. There's lightweight, middleweight, and heavyweight armors, and depending on your class, you can use different weights. Uh, if you are a heavyweight, then you can use every armor. If you're a lightweight like Marissa, then you can only use lightweight armor. I guess technically it's small, medium, large, but I prefer light, heavy, you know, medium stuff, I guess. I don't know. Uh, shields, like I said, we can't go into yet. And then every character can, in, uh, can also have one of three generic weapon types as well. There are five in total. You've got sword, you've got lance, you've got knife, you've got axe, and you've got stuff. And depending on what character you are, you can use three of those five. So we'll show that in a bit as well when we get the rest of them. For now though, let's just go into a general fight. You see the enemies are pretty persistent when you get close enough to them, and uh, yeah, we'll just show a thing, I guess. So I think these enemies are weak against Slash, and fortunately I only have one Slash weapon on me at the moment, so there is that. Do not be afraid to use your MP and such, even though you don't recover it. It's, uh, you know, between battles, it's easy enough to get it back. So, yeah, and then of course Aya kind of gets blinded. Hey, wow, first drop. That's really great, actually. <laughs> so these guys can inflict blind and silence on their physical attacks, as uh, Aya kind of demonstrated there, unfortunately. Uh, a drop will only... I should really say, yeah, the, the drop will only actually count if we win the battle. But, of course, this guy's not going to put up too much of a fight from here, so that's fine. Now, we see we got an extra life off of him, so if one of my characters had died in a previous battle, then we would get an extra life back. If all if the characters' lives are fully depleted, then they will not be able to participate in any battles until you go heal. Otherwise, if a character dies in battle, then it doesn't matter in the sense of they will come back at full health for the start of the next fight. Of course they will be disabled for the rest of the battle unless you revive them, and revival skills are kind of really hard to come by, so yeah. So yeah, of course enemies have drops as well as we've just seen, so that's pretty nice. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and grab a couple of uh, couple of things here. The stages are fairly linear, there's there's not really too much to worry about within the stages, and there's a few times that you may get lost, but really it's more about uh, more about the progress that you make, I guess. And also, ooh, last words, that's actually something I could show off as well, why not? So, last words are something that characters will charge up uh, behind the scenes. You can't ever tell when they're going to get them, but when you do get one, it uh, has a pretty powerful effect. Most last words are very good. Uh, Raymu's one is a full party heal, which is pretty nice, and they all have their own cinematic effects to them and stuff as well, so she almost died with that. Wow, Falcon Slash is a high priority move, so... So yeah, uh, fully healed up, and the fairy goes down. So yeah, that kind of shows off that, I guess. And uh, yeah, we'll see some very interesting effects from that later on. But for now, we're just gonna try and avoid doing too many fights here, because I want to just kind of show off some of the uh, mechanics and stuff here. So. Yeah, that's uh, something else I should have said, really, that um, once you've cleared something in a dungeon, it stays cleared. So this key here, which obviously will open the door right here, now if I leave the place, then this will stay open. Likewise, all of these will stay open too, so 
you don't have to worry too much about that, which is pretty nice. Because general exploration is definitely something you should be doing a lot within this game. There are a lot of extra items and stuff that you can find just by uh, looking around. And like I said, this is actually outdated now. This does not apply in Weekend. If you're still playing version 2.09 for Lingering Summer Heat, then this will apply. But in Weekend, it does not. So yeah, I think I need one more weapon and then I'll be able to show what they all do and then we'll probably end the video at that so oh and we also get an extra thing here we're getting quite lucky in terms of drops here which is pretty nice so we are going to show that off soon uh, let me just quickly check what items I do have um I am missing None of them. Yeah, I'm actually not missing any of them, so heck yeah. Right, so, just to go over the weapon types real quick, the practice sword, now swords are your standard weapon, they've got reasonable accuracy, they've got reasonable power, they do slash damage, and yeah, they're, they're okay. Some of, Most swords later on have got other beneficial effects to them. Like they're not the most powerful weapons and they're not the least accurate. You know, they're kind they're just in the middle sort of things. But they can have some very powerful secondary effects, which is quite nice. And obviously the drop that we got is a lot better than the one that we had before. But I should note that the stronger the weapon, the generally the lower the accuracy. It's not always true, but as your weapon gains more attack power, it gains less accuracy. And actually that's something I didn't really explain either. Accuracy is uh, basically a sort of percentage. Um, if you have over 100 accuracy, then you should be hitting with all of your shots, unless the opponent has evasion. Evasion, I, I don't remember exactly how that gets factored in, whether it's you know like a multiplier or if it's just a simple additive thing, but essentially so long as you have more than 100 accuracy, you should be hitting most of your shots. But if you have less than that, you will miss on occasion. So then we've got axes, which are stronger than stronger than swords, but less accurate. They do strike damage as well, so that's a different style of hit. Uh, whereas the sword is, you see here, it's only one power less and it's 10 accuracy more, so this first axe is not particularly great, of course, but it's just a generic show you what the weapon is like. Uh, also, axes do ignore a little bit of the enemy defense. It's not a huge amount, I don't think, although some of them will ignore more than others, but yeah. Uh, that's something to take into account. A lot of axes later on will inflict debuffs on the opponents when they attack, so that's also something to bear in mind. So then we get the staffs, which are the only things that have magic attack, and uh, when you use this, you do not have the ability to use a shield, so blocking is not possible with, uh, with a uh, staff attached. Which is a shame, but also every single staff in the game has an accuracy of 85, but they don't have particularly good attack power, so you usually shouldn't be attacking physically with them. They do strike damage as well, so axe and uh, staff are the strike damage weapons, and then sword and dagger are the slash type weapons. So the dagger is weaker than the sword, but is more accurate. Most of these will also inflict uh, status conditions on the opponent, so Whilst the axe does debuffs and the sword does general added effects, uh, you usually get stuff like paralysis, poison, blindness, you know, the, the general works for these. So daggers are quite nice for that. They aren't particularly strong, so you've got to bear that in mind as well, but they can do some good work. And then finally the lance is the only generic stab type weapon. and. Basically, if the enemy isn't armored very well, then you know they don't have a lot of defense. Then it can do a lot of damage, but it's very easily affected by the opponent's defense. I usually don't use lances very often because they are also, you know, shield hoggers. 
If you spec the growth tree enough for them, you can actually use a shield with a lance, but usually you can't, so that's kind of lame. Uh, I should maybe say that the special thing with lances is that most of them will have some sort of AoE based effect to them. Uh, a lot of them will be able to pierce through a column of uh, a row or a column of enemies and uh, yeah, they generally just hit multiple foes uh, with a chance uh, chance effect. So if that's your thing, that's great. Usually I don't like them because they're not quite as strong as an axe. They're relatively accurate, they're a bit more accurate than the sword, but I don't find they're strong enough and the fact that you can't use shields is very often a big thing. So personally I don't like them, but hey, that's uh, that's my own taste. So I guess we can do a quick equipment change here. So Reimu can use swords, sta uh, staves and lances. So we'll put the short sword on her. Um, should really have just done it this way. Uh, Marissa can use uh, staves, daggers and lances. So usually Marissa won't be having a shield effect, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, there's that. I'm actually not going to switch her weapon though because she gets one less magic attack and a lot less speed for this. Uh, I guess that's another thing I should have said. The uh, the lighter your equipment, the faster you move. So the sword is average in that, the dagger is really light so you move very quickly, the staves, uh, no, staffs and axes are pretty heavy so you can't move as fast, and the lance is actually pretty quick so maybe that's a good reason to have it. Like good accuracy and good speed but low power and uh, very affected by enemy defense. But yeah, uh, Sano can use axes, daggers and lances so we'll put the practice dagger on her. Her magic attack goes down but that doesn't affect her core skills too much so we'll just use that. And Aya can use swords uh, axes and lances. So even though she does lose a bit of accuracy, she does go below 100 with that, I'm going to go ahead and just put... Well you know what, there's not really any point in putting the axe on her at the moment. You can see how much of a speed difference that makes though. Uh, but yeah, there's not really much point in doing that right now. I'm just going to put the practice sword on because it's barely any weaker and I don't particularly need strike damage I don't think. So. Slash is probably more effective right now, so yeah. And that is basically it, so next time I guess we shall explore some of the other menu stuff. There's an awful lot of mechanics to explain in this game, so I'll probably end up spending most of the first like four or five episodes actually explaining mechanics here, and I do apologize for that, but honestly it's... There's a lot to cover in this game and it's better to do it earlier rather than later because uh, we can explain things, you know, and have people know what's going on for the when it actually gets serious. But yeah, uh, next time we shall go over some more of the menu stuff and we shall finish up the library place. So until then, we're just going to watch this very spaz out because why not? <laughs>